uh, this lecture is uh, created for the students of final year so this is for undergraduate students the instruments which are used in obstetrics and gynecology this is a simple rubber catheter it's used to empty the bladder in cases with retention of urine like in the retroverted gravid uterus during pregnancy and during labor when the woman fails to pass urine by herself before and after any operative intervention like before forceps delivery before vacuum delivery before breech delivery or before destructive operations like a cleidotomy or symphysotomy we have to empty the bladder with this catheter after the delivery during the management of the postpartum hemorrhage and the retained placenta empty the bladder the other uses it can be used as a tourniquet during myomectomy as a mucus sucker when it's attached to the mechanical or electrical sucker so the examiner asks the questions related to this rubber catheter what's the length of femoral urethra it's a 4 cm why a metal catheter is not used in obstetrics to avoid trauma to the soft and vascular urethra this is a foley catheter see here two channels one is for filling the balloon this is the balloon and this is for irrigation this channel is for irrigation sorry this channel is for irrigation from here this this is the tip of the foley catheter there is the opening urine will flow through this opening and come out through this from this opening this channel urine bag is attached so urine will be collected and this channel is for inflation of balloon this is the balloon and the maximum capacity of this balloon is the 30 cc so we inflate this balloon with a distilled water we are not using the normal saline or air if we are using the normal saline it become dry and the crystals will sticks and it will not come out if we are not using the air to inflate this balloon why because air is light it can float and cannot it cannot come out okay or it cannot um, it it cannot come out so this is the foley's catheter it's used it is indwelling catheter this catheter is this is the indwelling catheter by inflating this balloon this catheter keep in the place for uh, uh, many hours or for days or for weeks let's depend upon the indications it's used for continuous drainage of bladder in cases with eclampsia retroverted gravid uterus to give rest to the bladder following in destructive operation and or in cases with suspected bladder injury it's kept for 7 to 10 days it can monitor it can be used is a monitor the urine output in the eclampsia patient in shock patient the patient who went into the pph or ph or sepsis or it can be used after surgery mean during cesarean section or hysterectomy or vaginal hysterectomy when the patient is unable to move we, uh, this catheter can be used for monitoring of the urine output so sims this is a sims double bladed speculum two blade this is a sims double bladed speculum it's a unequal breadth from this it's white this is the narrow so introduce into the vagina depend upon the space available if the narrow blade this this narrow blade is in the nulliparous woman this broad blade in the multiparous woman it's used in obstetrics retract the posterior vaginal wall to visualize the cervix and tear vagina and to detect any injury following delivery clean the vagina following delivery to inspect the cervix and vagina to exclude any local cause for bleeding as an aph during dnc and suction evacuation so this is the sims speculum it requires the assistant to hold 
otherwise it will fall in out so it's required the assistant to hold this is a cascose speculum or bivalve speculum these are the bivalve self retaining once it's introduced into the vagina we close this this is the lock when we open this lock we close this and we close this lock this is open so with this lock this with blades are closed and we introduce into the vagina then fix this lock this blade will be open cervix is visualized anterior and posterior vaginal wall retract and this is the self retaining no need of the assistant this is the self retaining what are its uses it's used in the examination of vagina and cervix in cases of abnormal vaginal bleeding to take cervical smear for cervical cancer screening to insert or remove iucd to take vaginal and cervical swabs to exclude the infection visualize the cervix in manual vacuum aspiration to allow introduction of the uterine sound to diagnose the premature rupture of the membranes in case with history of the watery vaginal discharge and to exclude the cord rollers to exclude local causes of fph like the polyp ectropion or any growth this is a wall cellum see here there are two three tooth these are the jaw the pointed tips these are the jaw two or three tooth it this is the wall cellum see here this is the curve these are the rings this is the lock it's used to hold the anterior lip of the cervix in dna of in dna it's produce trauma to the soft and vascular cervix so it's not used during the pregnancy so in the pregnancy the anterior lip of the cervix is used with sponge holding forceps sponge holding forceps this is used to hold the anterior lip of the cervix for any operation which is performed in the cervix like it's used in the iucd insertion it's hold the anterior lip of cervix iucd insertion for manual vacuum aspiration for dilatation of ureters for suction evacuation for our dilatation and evacuation so it's used and it can also be used in the paracervical block to hold the anterior lip of the cervix and if the anterior lip of the cervix is damaged or it's a flushed we can use hold this uh, with the posterior lip of the cervix and it's uh, also used uh, when we are doing the caldosynthesis this is the ellis tissue forcep so this is the same the ellis tissue forcep this is also the ellis tissue forcep and it's also used to catch to catch the anterior lip of the cervix the same to hold the apex of the episiotomy during wound repair vaginal mucosa during repair to catch or hold the rectus sheath to catch or hold the torn end of sphincter anus external sphincter anus or internal sphincter anus prior to the suture and repair of complete perineal tear when there is third or fourth degree perineal tear we hold the sphincter to catch or hold the angles of the uterine flaps in lower segment cesarean section after the delivery of the baby is an alternative to a green armitage this is the long straight hemostatic forcep long straight forcep artery forcep for hemostasis that's why its name is hemostatic forcep long straight this is the long and straight some some are the curved some are small size some are the medium size so their size is a long medium small straight or curved if it's a curved here is a curved in in this okay so this is not commonly used in obstetrics it can be used to clamp the pedicle while removing the uterus as in rupture uterus or it's used during the hysterectomy for a pedicles the umbilical cord may be clamped as an alternative to cockers 
so what are the causes of ruptured uterus you must have a grip on these the causes of the ruptured uterus how to suspect the scored hyacinths how a case of ruptured uterus is managed you must know about that this is a cocker hemostatic forcep to clamp the umbilical cord for better grip and effective crushing effect to occlude the vessels in low rupture of the membrane is surgical induction of the labor or augmentation of the labor uterine artery clamp during hysterectomy so examiner may ask what are the structure of the umbilical cord umbilical cord consists of the three vessels one vein two arteries umbilical artery umbilical veins and the water jelly the significance of single umbilical artery it indicates the chromosomal abnormalities mainly the down syndrome or the baby have some cardiac problem indication of the induction of the labor induction of labor is indicated uh, there are so many indications for the induction of the labor when there is prolonged pregnancy beyond 42 weeks or beyond 41 weeks and uh, there is the eclampsia preeclampsia for uh, any medical problem or uh, when the the medical conditions are uncontrolled or indication for the um, on the maternal demand so there are so many indications dangers of induction of the labor hypertonic uterus fetal rupture of the uterus fetal distress pph infection what is the pre induction cervical scoring system this is the bishop score you have to do the bishop scoring what immediate attention we should pay following arm when we rupture the membranes we don't remove our fingers it's a controlled arm to prevent the slippage of the umbilical cord so to prevent the cord prolapse we put our finger inside till the all like a drain and the presenting part fix into the lower uterine segment to prevent the umbilical cord prolapse this is the long scissor pointed long scissor no lock in the scissor it's a pointed long curved scissor it's commonly used to cut the umbilical cord or umbilical cord can be cut with the uh, surgical blade to make an episiotomy to cut suture material in any surgery in the cesarean section or in any surgery so when the questions are when the umbilical cord should be clamped and cut it should be cut after 1 minute until at least there is some fetal distress or there is a uh, uh, the baby is in distress or baby is not breathing at the time of birth immediately we cut the clamp otherwise we cut and clamp and cut the cord after 1 minute what are the indications of early cord clamping and cutting when there is the baby is not breathing well or rh incompatibility or hiv infection at what distance from the umbilicus the cord is clamped and cut that's a uh, 3 cm 3 cm from the base of the umbilicus this is the uterine sound see here this is the uterine sound here the numbers that indicate the size of the uterus to know the position of the uterus and the length of uterine cavity prior to dilatation of the cervix so we know the size of the uterine cavity okay so uterus is antiverted or retroverted and what's the its size so before dilatation and curettage before dilatation and evacuation before manchester repair or before hysteroscopy or vaginal hysterectomy we see the size of the uterine cavity even before the insertion of the iucd or myrena we note the size of the uterine cavity this sound detect any foreign body it acts as a first dilator of the cervical canal So examiner may ask what are the instruments required for DNA or suction evacuation? What are important steps of suction evacuation or DNA? What are the complication of suction evacuation or DNA operation? This is very easy. You first recognize what are the instruments and what are its uses. This is the Higgard dilator. 
small the this both ends represent the size this is dos or hegar dilator is a double ended one double ended this end this end the minimum size is 1 and 2 and the maximum size is 11 and 12 1 and 2 mean 1 then thicker 2 then size increase 3 then thicker 4 so maximum is 11 and 12 the number represents the diameter in millimeters both the sides are used with the lower number first so lower number first mean 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 what's the size it uses in the dilatation of cervical canal prior to evacuation degree of dilatation required how much dilatation is required that's um 1 cm if uses in the pregnant uterus then 1 cm uh one number below the gestational age if the gestational age is 8 then we have to use the number 7 dilator so what are the exam questions how to know the point of suction procedures how to know the end point of suction procedure we know the suction procedure when there is the bubbles or pink frothy blood pink frothy blood or bubbles what is the management protocol when there is a uterine perforation when we suspect the perforation this dilator will go inside the uterine cavity inside the tummy so when we suspect the dilator is going inside mean larger end will go inside then we suspect there is a uterine perforation we immediately stop the procedure we inform our consultant we inform the anesthetist observe the patient if the patient is vitally stable keep on the conservative treatment give analgesic antibiotic and strict monitoring if patient is not vitally stable or bleeding then we have to do the laparoscopy or laparotomy laparoscopy is helpful what is the indication of the laparotomy following perforation the laparoscopy is helpful to assess the situation when when we suspect the patient is uh, the perforation of the uterus and uh, the patient is bleeding and deteriorating we immediately do the laparotomy otherwise the laparoscopy is helpful to assess the situation lateral uterine wall injury with retroperitoneal hemorrhage or broad ligament hematoma suspected injury to bowel and or omentum deterioration of vital signs during the period of observation or perforation prior to complete evacuation this is a flushing curate this blunt curate used in operation of dne previously it was used to flush the uterine cavity with liquiform antiseptic solution passing through the communicating channel there is a communicating channel but nowadays it's not used doins retractor this is the doins retractor it's used to retract the abdomen abdominal wall as well as the bladder for a proper exposure of lower uterine segment during the lower uh, segment cesarean section it is to be introduced after opening the abdomen to be temporarily taken off while the baby is delivered jab bachcha born hota hai to usse pehle hum isko nikal de de taki apna haath dal ke aur bachche ko deliver kar sake and it can be reintroduced after the delivery of the baby and finally to be removed after toileting the peritoneal cavity sponge holding forcep two rings to hold the sponge it's used for cleaning of the vulva vagina and perineum prior to and following delivery used in the antiseptic painting of abdominal wall prior to cesarean section to catch or hold the membrane if it is threatened to tear during the delivery of the placenta to catch or hold the cervix two pair of sponge holding are used to inspect the cervical tears to catch or hold the cervix during encephalage operation this is the uterine curate one is blunt one is sharp it may be sharp on the both sides it's common use in the dnc in the dne and the suction evacuation to curate the uterine cavity curating is initially done by blunt then with a sharp manual vacuum aspiration 
syringe. This is the manual vacuum aspiration syringe. It's used for evacuation of the uterus by creating a vacuum manually. It's used up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. The advantages are it's a simple, safe, can be done as an OPD basis with local anesthesia. It's effective in 98%, less traumatic. It can take less time than electrical vacuum aspiration. These are the cannulas which are used. These are the metal cannulas. Plastic section cannulas. These are the met uh, sorry. These are the plastic cannulas. These are the plastic section cannulas. They are different size, starting from the four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, no 11, no 11. So start from the 4 till 12 except 11. Appropriate size of the cannula diameter in millimeter. They are needed for a particular case in same to be duration of the pregnancy in the weeks. They are attached with this syringe. This cannula is attached with this syringe. They are first introduced into the uterine cavity, then attach with this and create a vacuum. So all product inside the uterine cavity will suck out. These are the release for sip. This is the toe, heel, shank, curve, inner is the cephalic curve. Outer is the pelvic curve. These are the fenestration. This is the shank. This is the lock. This is the blade. Why out this outer side is the pelvic because it's facing towards the pelvis. The inner side is fixed to the head. We call this the cephalic. Okay. So this is the cephalic curve. This is the outer is the pelvic curve. So this is the lock when we introduce to the baby head and give the gentle traction in the forward and upward direction. We remove this forward and upward direction. Why not down? Because to premade the third and fourth degree perineal tears. And the pelvic axis is like weight. This is the direction of the pelvic axis. Forward and upward. So it's indication assisted vaginal delivery when there is inadequate progress of the labor when woman is fully dilated two hours without regional anesthesia or three hours with regional anesthesia or maternal exhaustion. Fetal indication when there is the fetal distress, prophylactic shortening of the second stage of the labor, maternal Intracranial pathology, hypertensive problem, cardiac disease, class 3 or class 4. Prerequisites for the instrumental delivery. The word for seps, for saps, favorable head position, os fully dilated, rupture the membrane, contractions are adequate, engaged head, one fifth pegable or less per abdomen, adequate maternal pelvis strips or lithotomy position so this is the forceps or the a b c d e f g h i j so this is the mnemonic used in the delivery of the forceps a address the patient mean ask the patient take the consent analgesia abdominal examination Bladder empty, cervix fully dilated, contractions, determine the position, think prepare for shoulder dystocia, explain to patient, continually to check the position, gentle traction, halt between contraction and halt the procedure if ventus section disengage three times or there is no progress with three pulls. Incision, episiotomy, remove the instrument when jaw is visible. So this is the mnemonic for 
prerequisites of the instrumental delivery. This is the episiotomy seizure. This is the little bit angulated episiotomy seizure. It's bent on the edge. The blade with blunt tip go inside the vagina. This is the blunt tip. This go inside the vagina. This is the shop. So examiner may ask what are the types of the episiotomy? What is the episiotomy? So episiotomy giving the cut in the perineum to widen the perineum to widen the uh, passages of birth canal okay so what are the types it's a midline medial and the uh, medial midline j shape or medial usually the midline is performed in the us medial is performed in the uk and the uh, developing countries like the pakistan so there are advantages of the midline and the medial uh, midline and the medial lateral episiotomy what structures which are cut in the episiotomy how we repair what are the suture materials and what are the complications of the episiotomy you must know all about the episiotomy and what analgesia is used post episiotomy care this is a ventus cup silicon ventus cup this is the metallic cup with um, a traction and traction uh, chain this is the traction chain. So it's a use in the operation of the vacuum extraction of head. The cup is to be fitted into the scalp. The indications are almost same as the forcep, but it is not indicated in the face delivery, in the face position, in the breech position, and in the pretrum. Because there is formation of the shignon that is artificial kippet. So Chignon with the help of vacuum, the cup has got various sizes. Different sizes are available according to the patient position, patient sizes. Green Armitage hemostatic forcet. These are the white blade. See here, these are the white blade. So this forceps is used in the lower segment seizure and section. Four forceps are used. One is for, two is for angle, closing the angle and two is for lips. So these are acting as the hemostasis to prevent the more bleeding from the cut edge of the uterus. This is a cord clamp, disposable. It's made of plastic and is supplied in trial peak. The serrated surface and the lock make its grip warm. These are the serrated surface. This is the lock. It occludes the umbilical vessel effectively. The cord clamp is to be kept in place until it falls off together with a detached stump of the umbilical cord. Pinot stethoscope. This is the fetoscope or pinot stethoscope. This is the fetoscope. This is the this angle, this um, side is the maternal side, which are kept under the maternal abdomen. This is the earpiece through which we listen the fetal hertz. So, what's the normal fetal hertz? It's a 110 to 160 beats. Before or below 110 is the bradycardia. Below 100 is the bradycardia. More than 160 is the tachycardia. You must know the reason of the bradycardia and the reason of tachycardia. So this all are taken from the textbook of DC Data and the straight OG. Thank you.